Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix and today we're going to be looking a little bit more into VTAM. The reason I want to do a video about VTAM is that I see again and again and again that people who uh, re either return again to the mainframe, especially to, to MVS after, after many many years of absence from uh, this technology or people who are newly drawn into into the mainframe and especially MVS or ZOS fail to understand the communication subsystem that is present in, uh, in pretty much all of the modern mainframe operating systems which is VTAM. Uh, VTAM uh, is, is a, uh, a subsystem in MVS and, uh, and uh, ZOS. It handles all the originally thought to handle all the SNA networking. SNA means uh, systems networking architecture. It was the protocol that IBM devised for networking between applications and between uh, computers. Later it expanded with uh, other protocols such as token ring, Ethernet and um, SDLC, start stop protocols as well as also later on TCP IP. So it handles communications and uh, a lot of people use uh, the MVS uh, images that we have, such as TK4, as a pure batch machine, just using the card reader and the printer, which which a lot of people do, and that's perfectly fine. Other people, uh, probably maybe the somewhat younger generation, and emphasis on somewhat, uh, is more comfortable using a, a terminal emulator and having a terminal session because they grew up working uh, in interactive mode and these are the people that sometimes fail to understand VTAM and failure to read the manuals uh, can sometimes lead to a lot of frustration I see this quite often on the discord channel uh, that go, comes along with the Moshix mainframe channel I'll uh, I'll be posting a link to the Discord channel in the description below this video. And I see that a lot of people are frustrated by some problems or some things they don't understand about VTAM, sometimes even IPL whole systems again, just because uh, a terminal is in a hung mode, which does happen. And so today we're going to look at how to handle VTAM. So first of all, some, uh, some things about VTAM. Uh, VTAM was introduced, I think, in 1976 by IBM as a replacement for TCAM and before that BTAM. Um, uh, those were other protocol, older protocols that have very limited buffer sizes and could only handle very limited amount of devices, and mainly did not allow easily application to application uh, uh, communication. VTAM was introduced, uh, which means which means which means virtual telecommunication access method so I uh, was introduced in 76 and the reason it's called virtual is because I've been was so excited about the introduction of virtual memory in uh, in MVS uh, up in the MVS operating system that they started to call everything V such as vSAM and the many other things and um, and then method gives away that it's actually a set of APIs as such VTAM really pro is a is an address space that provides a, an, an API so that people, so that programmers can use it to interact with through a network with other terminals or other software or other systems. And if you remember the videos that we used recently, where in, the, in where I programmed for TSO using TPUT and TGET, those would be very good examples of commands or macros that I use in Assembler to access. Uh, the APIs provided by VTEM. VTEM came along with the 3705, IBM 3705 telecommunication controller. Let's see if I find a good image. Uh, yes. Uh, so these were the communication controllers uh, that, could, uh, that could attach terminals to. Later on, those were replaced by uh, 3705. Hold on a second. These are the controllers. Uh, let me see if we can find a good one. Uh, I think that's a 37. Yeah, that's a 3705, which, by the way, is a fully emulated in TK4. A lot of people don't realize that in TK4 we actually have a full emulation of this uh, telecommunication computer that was attached at the front of an IBM mainframe so that it would manage all the lines. And um, But very limited buffers, I think. This had like an 8-kilobyte buffer and could still control thousands of terminals. 
Um, and later on, this was replaced by 3745, uh, which is this is how I remember it looked. And there are probably newer versions of this. Oops, there were they would land. And then later on, they became smaller. This is. And this is a computer in its own right. I mean, it has a, an operating system in it. It has a program called NCP, which you have to actually generate on the mainframe and then transfer over there, which will control the lights. And the va this is a very important thing. The vast majority of 3270 terminals and compatibles would be attached to uh, the mainframe, ultimately through a device like this, the 3705. Uh, 3705 3744 through something called the 37 3174 controller uh, what's called an establishment control every branch or every sometimes every floor or every half floor or something like that you would have one of those those IBM controllers and uh, what they do is all the terminals attached to this and then this will be attached to one of these guys, either through a phone line or through token ring often, later on through Ethernet. And then from here, it will go then to uh, through lines, then it would arrive at the data center where this was sitting, 3745, and this would be attached by a channel directly um, to the uh, mainframe. And this is what we need to understand, that it will go from terminal to 3174 to one of these guys, from here through either a switch line or through a lease line it will go over the network sometimes thousands of miles to this guy which was sitting in the data center and this will be connected through a channel to the mainframe and we have to understand that that when we today when we work with uh, TK4 and Hercules our terminals are attached by a, by a channel directly to the mainframe that's what we're emulating we're not emulating uh, all the steps here, the 3174 and then the 3745, we have, for the most part, except for the 37 emulation in TK4, we're attaching our terminals through a channel directly to the mainframe, which is possible. Technically, it was, it was done also uh, specifically for the terminals uh, such as the console and the system programmers terminals sometimes were attached directly to the, to the uh, terminal, to the mainframe through a character multiplex channel. Of which there was always at least one in every mainframe and and so that is a main difference that we're not really using the full networking capability sna that people were using in production and still used to some extent today um and and that is a one big difference and and if we don't understand that a lot of things will just not fall into place so first of all to the first major thing to understand is that we use direct attached terminals now in tk4 Jürgen Winkelmann, the uh, creator of TK4 and the, and the maintainer of this distribution, actually wrote a 3705 emulator, which uh, is present. Let me see. I took this from the manual. I always read the manual. So it's, it's a little bigger. So uh, he has a table in his manual, Jürgen, and that's why you should always read the manual, that, the, that tells you um, how terminals are attached to TK4 to MVS. Okay, so this is the part where we use 3270s. Okay, so we'll focus only on that. This is for remote job entry. We'll not we'll, we'll not talk about remote job entry today or 2741 terminals. Those are sli handled slightly different, but we need to understand that um, all the if we have a model that is connected. On this kind of ports, zero C07, C0 through C7, that it goes through VTAM, and that's and that's channel attached. Okay. Uh, Pro logons actions reset followed by clear will redisplay the logon screen. A lot of people complain about the attention key causing problems. First of all, there's not one attention key. There's several PA1, PA2, reset. Those are all attention key keys. It would, which means the request from the 3174 establishment controller is something to, to be to be done on the terminal. And since we don't have 3174, um, though that's that's the big difference there. Uh, and then uh, if we attach through channel addresses, this is the one big distinction here. Okay, 
664 through 665, we're actually not using VTAM at all, but we're using, uh, sorry about this, we're using another protocol which is also present in our MBS, which is TCAM, which is another protocol. So there's these two protocols existing in TK4 at the same time, and the way we connect decides uh, which, term, which protocol we're using to connect to TSO. So for instance, if you use a Model 4, we will always be going through a TCAM, okay? So let me use here, um, this is a Model 4, because I know because when you say a new set, if you use a Model 3, you will always go through VTAM. And those, there are fundamental differences. These two terminals look exactly the same, but since this is a Model 4 emulation, as we saw here, Model 4 goes through TCAM, and that's the address we get here. Um, CUUC0, okay. Um, this other terminal is CUC1 um, because we defined terminal 3. And that goes through, uh, so 4 goes through TCAM, 3 goes also through TCAM, 2 would go through, through VTAM. That, as you can see here, uh, this reacts already differently because there's no VTAM responding to this because I don't have this uh, 6668 defined in my TK4. So you have, you're actually always going through a TCAM and uh, that's one thing to understand. As you can see here now, this terminal 00C2 is not active. So we have to activate it to do that. I go in as system administrator, uh, system programmer. You can do it from the MBS console, but the way I do it is usually through IMON. I go OT, and you will see now what's going to happen. I type very many times. Whenever, whenever we want to change the status of a hardware device on the main for use the very command, very uh, net. That's how we talk to the uh, networking subsystem. In this case, it's VTAM. Activate ID C U U zero C two. So we did that, and very command was accepted by VTAM. IST is VTAM, and it does now give us a terminal that we can log in as we wish. Okay. So let's say I push some buttons, and I have to configure it. But uh, sys request, sys request will now put this terminal and that's what people a lot of people mean when they press attention just don't press it um, but if this terminal is gets stuck as I did now I just pressed sys request so now it's stuck but oh, it actually recovered nicely but um, so now I use sys request that's it it's stuck now um, so now what do we do we go here and we say very net inactivate or deactivate ID equals CUU 0C2 uh, however it takes several minutes for this to happen and the reason is because we're going to 37 through the 3705 emulation which exists in uh, TK4 and that takes a little bit to respond so let's put this aside in the meantime let's see what the manual says here so it says the terminal experience on the TCAM, so TCAM aspects of 3270, let's make this a little bigger. The behavior of TCAM control terminals is very close to that of the more commonly used VTAM. So they behave similar, but they're not exactly the same. Does TCAM provide a very viable independent second way to access the system if VTAM or TSO VTAM does not work? The terminal experience on the TCAM depends on the way application make use of the TPUT, which we saw in my assembler program. No edit, full screen. So we saw all of this in my assembly program. As we can see now, a lot of the stuff that we've been doing in this channel uh, are starting to come together very, very nicely. Uh, screen size. TCAM doesn't query uh, terminal capabilities, but rather relies on the value specified during the TCAM generation. So in TK4, all TCAM controlled, not SNA32 samples are generated as Model 4. So if you go through as Model 4, when you make a connection, you will always go through TCAM, while all TCAM controlled SNA terminals are generated as model three. So if you go three, you go through SNA terminals. 
If you go four, you have a TCAM, but not SNA terminal. So remember to set it correctly to what you want. Besides generating TCAM using different screen squares, there's also a way to change the screen with letters. So we can also do it as a terminal command. Okay. Um, and then we have this table here, which I have here. And again, you need to understand this table because how you connect and the terminal size is very, very specific. If you connect now through 37911, then you're going to be VTAM SNA. Okay. And if you go through these ports, then it's going to be TCAM. So again, so we're going to connect to the cloud, um, to our cloud mainframe instance, uh, our MBS that I run in the cloud for, for the community. You, everyone, everyone can request a logon by sending me an email with your true name, what do you want to do on the system, and the logon ID you, you prefer to have, as well as the password, the initial password you want to have, and I'll generate you a logon user ID, and then you don't need to run your own MBS. You can just log in and play with it. You don't need to keep your own MBS up and running at all time because I'm doing that for you. We already have 60 or 70 or 80 users uh, on the system, and it works quite nicely. It's up 24-7, except for very rarely when I need to take it down for backup or system maintenance. But um, so let's... Oh, I did block this port on uh, on my cloud, Google Cloud instance where TK4 is running, so I would have to open this port. But if we use this port and the port is open through the firewall, then you will be connecting VTAM SNA, etc. So it is very important uh, now TK4. I have four on 3270, so I will be connecting. <coughs> oh, I have to change. So now I'm connected with, with TCAM non-SNA okay very important to understand so um, <coughs> this explains why uh, certain behavior acts differently depending on how you're connecting because some people don't realize they're connecting sometimes with a with a type 4 sometimes with a type 3 so always know what you're connecting at and to what port so if you want VTAM SNA which probably is the best way to handle um, the attention keys uh, then connect to port 37911 with any terminal size and you'll be running VTAM SNA. Okay, so that's the that's that's one sure way. If, then a lot of people, we have one person, especially uh, a person who's very present on Discord, who's also a DOS VSE expert as well as a, v, a, v, a VM expert. He likes to do remote job entry. And so he has to connect through a dial-up line. So he uses the 3780 terminal emulator to do a remote job entry. So he supplies jobs to Jess 2 remotely and then gets the output again remotely. Um, and uh, that uh, requires connection to this kind of ports. So uh, go read your TK4 manual um, because all this is specified there. And uh, this is the table. That's where I took it from. And you can also see from the terminal what kind of uh, controller you're connected to because of the response from TSO. TSO, of course, is aware what you're connecting through. Uh, uh, so we can see here uh, that VTAM responds differently. IKJ must be overwritten by the login command. So the, you need to read this section. Then you have the remote job entry that I just talked about. Um, we can go look at the status of the lines. Um, okay, all the lines are active. Obviously, I have the sports blocked, so nobody can connect with, with remote job entry unless somebody really, really wants to do a remote job entry. And I know there's at least one gentleman who probably would like to play with it. I am right now keeping those ports um, closed on the firewall, but I do. I will be able to uh, open them up if you really wanted to. Um, yeah, so line one is active. That's remote one, as we saw here. And that's a uh, parameters to connect. So um, be aware of all the um, all the problems here with uh, with uh, of how you're connecting. It's very very important to understand that. Unless you don't understand that, you're not really going to have a lot of fun 
playing with your mainframe because now and then you will get stuck um, stuck lines stuck terminals and as I said before the way to do it is um, so let's see here so we have this terminal here for instance is stuck again okay so to to uh, make it work again what we need to do is in my case I go here and I say vary very okay net and act uh, ID CUU0 C2 okay we already issued that so this is going to take a, a little bit of time and then we can do very net we can try activate ID CUU0 C2 well it's still working on it and so the I V time is right now responding to us that it's working on resetting that line and it can take sometimes five to ten minutes um, that is not unusual at all and in the meantime we can maybe um, cancel user u p54 so u user equals p54 okay so at least that user is now not uh, taking up yeah so p54 is still starting as you can see here that's because the terminal is stuck i press this request so in those cases there's no need to re-ipl the whole system and by the way uh it doesn't matter if it's mvs or um or zos or os390 even dos vs vtem will behave very similar in all those systems so you need to you need to understand how to control vtem there's no point in re-ipling a whole system just because a terminal is stuck that would have been ridiculous just a few a few months ago, uh, a few years ago uh, 10 years ago um, and just because we have emulated system we can you know we should try to have best practices in place so uh, this is um, about vtam read the manual have fun if you have questions post the questions either here in the comments below this video or join our discord channel uh, by following the link below this video we also have a active facebook page where we have more general topics we discuss there and if you want to have access to our cloud-based uh, vtem system uh, mbs system the one we, you see right here send me an email with your real name what do you want to do your uh, proposed uh, tso login id up to seven characters and the initial password and uh, i'll uh, give you a logon uh, please behave please uh, delete your spool um, output after you finish your session uh, so that we don't fill up the spool thank you very much for watching this channel see you soon and goodbye